Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Welcome to Inventory. Uh, today we're here to talk about protested movies, movies that were so controversial that people took to the streets that their picket signs and protested against them. Uh, my movie is The Last Temptation of Christ. The most blasphemous, the most disrespectful, the most satanic movie that's ever been filmed. The title refers to this sequence where Christ is on the cross and he is tempted to give up the sacrifice and live a real life as a human being. I don't have to be sacrificed. No. No, you don't. The real controversial thing was that he makes love to Mary Magdalene. <gasps> we can have a job. <gasps> there are protests happening wherever it was shown. It's filthy, indecent, and it will ruin Jewish-Christian relations for years to come. The religious right was on the rise. This, this was 1988. And they found this kind of cause to rally behind. They put a tremendous amount of pressure on the studio to bury the film, which they ultimately had to do. It was actually legitimately hard to see the movie if you wanted to. You think God belongs only to you? I think the movie is a profoundly you know, respectful film and not at all this piece of filth that people had presumed it to be. Yeah, yeah, many people who have not even right. seen, it. seen it. Right. I remember watching an interview with Scorsese in which he said his own priest from childhood watched the movie and told him that it was uh, too much Good Friday, not enough Easter Sunday. <laughs> and which, which is interesting in the light uh, years later of Bill Gibson's Passion of the Christ, which of course is all oh, Good Friday, Friday and yet was embraced by the evangelical community in a way that this other movie was not. Father! No, you have a different kind of protested movie. Yes, my movie is uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, which came out in 1984. Grandpa said Santa Claus was going to punish me. The plot's about a young kid named Billy who watches his family get killed in front of his eyes by a man wearing a Santa Claus suit. Need a ride, Santa Claus? Well, no, not exactly. Jump! Which is naturally a recipe for him later on in life putting on a Santa Claus suit. You try not to scare the little bastards. Grabbing an axe and going after the naughty. No, 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 no. Parents didn't like the fact that the advertising for these movies were all over television. The movie that shocked America. And when you have a movie like Silent Night, Deadly Night, that means your kids are being exposed to a axe-wielding Santa Claus in the middle of the day. Their protests were actually very, very effective. The company that was distributing the film actually pulled the film from theater chains and took their name off of it. Siskel and Ebert gave a scathing review on the air. And Silent Night, Deadly Night now has the distinction of joining I Spit on Your Grave as one of the two most contemptible films I've seen. And I don't mean to think it's campy, it really is quite awful. The director of the film, though, interestingly, Charles Sillier Jr., he moved on to produce a series of Christian-themed TV movies and documentaries like Miracles in Our Midst. <laughs> Now, Keith, your protested movie is also a thriller of sorts, but uh, a little bit sexier. A little bit sexier. It's uh, Basic Instinct, which came out in, in 1992. What's your new book about? A detective. He falls for the wrong woman. And I think it's an interesting case where both sides of the issue are a little bit right and a little bit wrong. There's uh, no smoking in this building, Miss Trammell. What are you going to do? Charge me with smoking? Trouble began for the film when the script actually got into the hands of some gay activists who saw it as another film with sort of deranged gay characters. If you don't leave her alone, I'll kill you. Particularly in this film, every woman who sleeps with another woman becomes a murderer. Um, and and uh, there's some ambiguity there, but more or less that. <laughs> Verhoeven's take on it is basically that the way to be grown-ups about it was to treat it as a non-issue. These were the characters' sexuality, and, and there you go. The thing is, though, this movie didn't appear in a vacuum. This movie appeared after decades and decades of unsympathetic portrayals of gay people. When the movie came out, there were protests. There were, uh, you know, attempts to, to spoil the finale of the film. It's kind of a case for everyone. One, it became a huge hit, one of the biggest hits of the year, but it also brought up the issue of portrayals of gays and lesbians in a way it never had been before. It's nice. I mean, it's worth noting, though, that all three of these films 
had a long afterlife and maybe even a longer afterlife because of the protests. To a certain extent, they all prove the point that protests, while they can be effective in the short term, may actually cause more people to want to see the film than to stay away. For more protested movies, go to avclub.com.